Hey guys, Joyce and Anthony, aka JJ, and the Blender team recently released the Brush Stroke Tools add on. It's a set of tools for a painterly 3D brush strokes workflow. And they also released a demo file, which is called the Fishing Hut Base Model. And that's what I use to practice for the first time. Both are free, and I provided links to both. And the demo file actually came with the, also like the house and the little bridge. But I wanted to just for the first time, just practice with, you know, the rocks, the ground and the trees. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So make sure you get both of them. And I'm using Blender version 4.3.2. Before we start, make sure you have it enabled. You go to edit preferences, get extensions. And in the search bar, just type in, I just type in like BRU and it's that brush stroke tools. If you don't have it installed, you just click install and make sure you have the latest version. I think it's 1.0.4. And yeah, once you have that, you should be good to go. I have auto save installed, but if you want to go down to the bottom left and click save, you can do that as well to save your preferences. Now we need to get the blend file. So go to file open and you, I have it saved on my desktop. So I'm going to have open up the fishing hut base model. And right now I'm in solid view and I want to go to rendered view. For this first experiment, um, kind of like how I had in the intro, I'm just going to hide the house and the bridge and we'll work on that next time. And I'm going to turn on the overlays so I can, you know, move it around a little bit easier. So let me click the little eye or the little checkbox. Sorry. And yeah, so right now we just have the ground, the rocks and the tree. And I'm going to start first with the rocks. And since the add-on is enabled, I'm going to press shortcut in for the sidebar to appear. And there is the add-on. And right now it says no valid surface objects. I have nothing selected. So let me select the rocks. Then I'm going to select fill. And this is the default. So I need to change the color and make the lines thicker so they cover the rock material. The two I use the most is shape and material. I'm going to go to material first to change the color. And again, like I don't want this bluish grayish color. So I'm going to unselect use brush color and I'm going to change it to like a grayish color I'll come back to that but now I'm going to go to shape the first thing I want to do is increase the density and before I show you um right here these are some of the things that you adjust the surface the brush the distribution the color I use pretty much the top three the most so density let's make our lines more dense It's good, but still see some of the rock material underneath. What if I adjust the, not the width. Eh, that's not bad. You, I always like to play around with the width, the length. Uh, yeah, those two, those three, the brush width, the brush length and the density are usually like my top three play with mm, you also have shrink wrap which shrinks the brush closer to the object but I'm gonna use that in the future of this video but not right now let me just continue to increase the width and the density I'm good with that. 
I'm going to go back to material and change it to more of a gray color and that's color variation. Obviously the lower it's closer to one color and the higher you change up the variation, you get different colors added in. Okay, I'm good with that. I really love the painterly feel that it gives and as you can see, it's really not that hard. Once you just get the hang of it and play around with it, it it's a lot of fun. So we did the rocks and I'll come back to the other rocks later. Now I want to move on to the tree. These trees are procedural assets that are created with geometry nodes. Okay, we're going to do what we did with the rocks. And once the object is selected, click fill. Okay, when I click that, it fills in the leaves and the tree. And if I go into the material and try to make the leaves a little bit more green, uh, it changes the rock as well. I do not want that. So I click Control Z to start over. So I'm gonna click Fill. And this time I'm going to separate first the tree I mean the leaves from the tree and then I'm going to make sure my color is different. So I'm going to click under masking, enabled, and then in the material, I'm going to click birch leaves to make sure just the leaves are selected. That's great, but now it's the same color as the rocks and I need to change that. So I'm going to go... Wait, first I'm going to, just to stay organized, I'm going to change the title of Birch 1 to just, I guess, Birch Leaves. Okay, I'm going to click out, oops, I just want to click just the leaves and I'm going to go to the material and to separate the colors, the materials, I'm going to click the rocks and then like the little number to the right. So that's 17 to create a new material. And I'm going to just call it rocks, rocks material. Okay. And I'm going to select my leaves and then do the same thing. Leaves material, just to make sure they are separate. So now when I go in and adjust the color to more of a green, it should only affect the leaves, not the rocks. Okay, great. I'm an autumn girl, so I like my yellows. Okay, I'm gonna go back to shape. And again, this is when I play around with the density, the width, the length. I can't really see anything, so I'm going to go from object mode to edit mode. I was just playing around with the texture extension. I don't think I'm going to need that for this. We're getting there, but the leaves look like, they look feathery to me. And I'm gonna adjust that. I'm gonna go from shape to material. And actually, let me, let me adjust the color variation to make it more autumn-like. And if you scroll to the bottom of material, you can adjust the brush style. And right now I'm using the default. Let's try. No. Mm. That's okay. And then you can also adjust the effects. There's four effects. I'm gonna go back to, I like fade. 
that's closer to what I want. I'm gonna go back to shape and maybe adjust the scale too big. Okay, I'm done with the leaves and now I want to do the tree. I want the style to be consistent from the leaves, so I'm making sure, making sure I have the tree selected. I'm going to copy, click that right there, duplicate, and I'm just going to rename this birch. tree and if you remember what we did previously we went to the material and I'm gonna change it from leaves to trunk and I'm gonna go back to my material and I'm gonna make a new material so I'm gonna click that seven and just rename it tree material just to stay organized so if I change one thing it doesn't affect something else Okay, let's make this, yeah, I'll go back to shape and now it's kind of, I need to like pull in the brush so it's closer to, yeah, it's closer to the tree. Let me maybe decrease the scale, the density, decrease that, maybe. Mm. what I did is I completely I continue playing with it but what I just did is just increase the shrink wrap so it was closer to the tree yeah yeah because again shrink wrap it shrinks the brush so it's as close to the material as possible close to, I'm sorry not the material close to the 3d object so I was looking at the rocks and I'm gonna go to material and increase the roughness I thought it was maybe like a little bit too shiny I want to copy what I did from the new tree to the old tree I don't want to do it over again so shift select the new tree and then with shift hold down the already edited tree and I'm gonna click this drop down copy to selected objects so right now it just copied what I did from tree number one to tree number, from leave number one to leave number two. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the tree. So I'm going to, oops, nope. Ah. Okay, shift select the tree. And then with shift still, I'm going to, with shift, with me still holding shift, I'm going to click on the tree that was already edited if I, eh, there we go. And then again, click this drop down, copy to selected objects. So now it just copied the leaves and the trees from my new tree from the old. And I'm going to repeat that process for the rocks. So I'm going to shift select the new rocks. Oops, shift select, and then shift click the rocks and then the drop down copy to selected objects even though i just copied to the second group of rocks everything i did to the first group is not affected for instance let me go back to shape and if i decrease the width the second group of rocks are not affected but actually i do want to go to the second group of rocks and adjust a little bit maybe decrease the width maybe the density okay so we've done the rocks and the trees up last is the ground so again you select it and then click fill for the ground it's using the same material as the rocks and i do not want that so under shape material i'm going to make sure to select the ground so now when i go in 
and adjust the color and everything, it should only affect the ground. Great. And go back to shape. Maybe. Maybe the density. I don't like that brown you can see underneath. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's try the texture extension. Uh, I'm going to go to material. We actually, I want to increase the color variation. Yeah. Maybe if I change the brush. What about an effect? Uh, okay. And I don't like how it's like sticking out. Let me click shrink wrap. Adjust the shrink wrap. That's good. Maybe. But you still see the brown. I'm happy with that and the blend file also came with lights that you can play with so we went over the brush strokes add-on thank you so much if you made it this far we're gonna continue to learn and play around with this blend file the blender team also has a training on their blender studio I provided a link to that as well that's where I've learned 99.9% .9 of everything I've gone over today well, this is Joyce and Anthony, a.k.a. JJ. Until next time.